I'm I'm not going to answer that question. And I'm not, <laughs> I'll be honest about not answering that. But I, I show that Canadians are still positive about immigration. I think the polls still show that. But they don't want an immigration system that's out of control or that is going in a direction that uh, that, 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 that doesn't make sense. And I was going to do a video today about a recent interview that was done with Mark Miller, but at the end of the day, it just kind of boiled down to the same old thing. Don't blame immigrants. Don't blame immigrants. It's not their fault. Well, you know what, Mark? Don't worry about it. We do blame some of them, the unscrupulous ones that choose to come in here under false pretenses and defraud our system and take full advantage of it. But we know better than to blame all immigrants. We'd rather blame the liberals. And that is what brings us to the actual topic of today's video, which is how the next election will be a battle for Canada's soul. I bring this up for two reasons. One reason has to do with the Liberals, the other has to do with the NDP. Let's start with the Liberals real quick. Northern Perspective had a very good insight on how Justin Trudeau might just resort to proroguing Parliament in order to avert an early election. Now, if Justin actually went through with this, it would be a travesty against democracy on an unheard level. I mean, we are not even back yet. At the time I'm doing this video, we still have a full week to go until Parliament resumes, and it's been two and a half months since parliament has been in session. So could you imagine if our rich kid prime minister actually chose to go through with this, to actually prorogue government just so he could avoid the inevitable? In another attempt to avoid the inevitable, now that Jagmeet Singh has broken up with him. Justin, I'm so sorry for pulling my support from you. Justin, I love you. <laughs> I did it, Justin, because my MPs were threatening to pull me down from a leadership position. I can't do that. Justin Trudeau is flirting with Yves Blanchet, the leader of the Bloc Québécois, in an attempt to secure a similar deal as to what he had going with the NDP. What we are seeing here is a man who is desperate to remain in power. This is not good. Justin Trudeau is clearly demonstrating he refuses to let go of his position. And that is a very dangerous place for Canada to be in. When you have someone who's already been in power for close to a decade and he refuses to accept that his ticket is about to get punched, that is call for concern. So that also brings us to the NDP. We have a nothing candidate in Craig Sauvé over in LaSalle. After my 11 years of experience in the municipal world, you know, I learn about governance, I've learned about how to get things done, uh, and I'm absolutely shocked about the inaction we've seen from the Liberal government on questions like housing. Uh, we're living it as in, in this city, you know. There are lands that are waiting for social housing development and the financing's not there. They haven't put the money forward. So we got to get this done, and people need someone who has a, a, a sure voice and that knows that they want housing for people and they can fight for it, and I believe I'm the voice for people in this riding that can go get that money, they can go raise my voice and tell the government that, hey, housing is absolutely a priority, we gotta get going on this issue finally. So what is it about Craig Sauvé that would be worth mentioning in a video of this sort? Might have to do with this. Look at his campaign flyer. It is featuring a flag of Gaza. Since when is it that we now sell Canada using another country's flag? And not just any country. A country that has successfully pulled the wool over the world's eyes and convinced the global population that they are perpetual victims. When it's quite the opposite. Now again, if I can say so, Piers, it's the same thing, which is the presumption that it's Netanyahu who is uncompromising. Uh, we end up with this, again, because Netanyahu is a democratically elected leader, and so it's assumed that some pressure can be brought to bear on him. Uh, it, I, in my view, it is not Netanyahu who's, who's uncompromising. It's Hamas that's uncompromising. They could have handed back the hostages uh, last October. Uh, they, they, they could have not done this. I mean, they could have tried to build a state since 2005 when Israel withdrew from the Gaza and handed the place over to them. Hamas could have used the billions of dollars that, and, and pounds that, and euros that British and European and American taxpayers gave them since 2006. They could have used those billions of dollars to build up Gaza. They could have made a booming 
in the good sense of the term, Mediterranean paradise. They could have created wealth for their people, but you know what they did? They, they built down instead of upwards. They built a tunnel network bigger than the London Underground for all of those years, and they squirreled away the money, just like Yasser Arafat did before them, and they made themselves rich. Why was Ishmael Hanir worth billions of dollars? Why does Khaled Mashal, why is he worth billions of dollars? Why are their, their children like princelings? who live in, in apartment complexes in Doha because they took the money of Americans and Brits and Europeans and they took it for themselves and kept the people of Gaza in immiseration and poverty. There has been since 2005 a complete counterfactual of what could have happened. But the Hamas leadership didn't want that. They have said themselves they want to use Palestinian children and their lives in order to pressurize the world. These are fanatics. They want the death of their own citizens. Their own citizens in order to get world opinion turned against Israel. Again, how do you negotiate with that? <laughs> And yet, we have people like Craig Sauvey who could find themselves in positions of power and using that power to perpetuate this scam. Not where we should be going, folks. Based on what I've been observing, it's anybody's guess what will happen. A lot of people don't believe Jag Meat has the chuts to call for an election, and I can't blame them for thinking that. Brian Lilly with the Toronto Sun. You've, um, you've made it very clear that you don't have faith in the, the Liberal government to deliver for Canadians. So a simple question, hopefully a simple answer. Do you have confidence in the Trudeau government? Well, we've ripped up the agreement with Justin Trudeau. That speaks for itself. I've ripped up the agreement, and I know that that means an election is now more likely. We will look at every vote as it comes and make a decision as it comes. I'm not going to presuppose the outcome of a vote before it happens. We will look at each vote and make our decision as it comes. But let us be very clear. I am absolutely aware that ripping up the agreement with Justin Trudeau means an election is more likely. And that sets up the question for what is this election going to be about? I am very strongly in, in, in belief that this election is about two of competing visions for our country. The vision of Pierre Polyam and the Conservatives is a vision to cut the things that you want. They're bragging about wanting to cut health care and destroy universal public health care as we know it. So the choice is, do you want Pierre Polyam and the Conservatives to make our healthcare system one where you've got to pay out of pocket to see a doctor and only those who've got money can get healthcare that they need. Or you Democrats who believe very fundamentally that it should not matter how much you have in your wallet to determine the quality of care and how fast you get it. That is a choice in this upcoming election. What vision of Canada Canadians want? You've said about a dozen times at least that you've ripped up the agreement and that that makes an election more likely. But you've been asked several times and you won't answer. Do you have confidence in the Trudeau government as they stand now? I will be clear again. We have absolutely ripped up the agreement with Justin Trudeau, and that means that, that, an election is more likely. Clear. That's and, not clear. You're and an election, whenever that election comes, we'll be ready to fight it. And the vision around that election is going to be an important one. Canadians will have to make a choice. But can we get can an answer? Corporate controlled conservatives, they're going to let their corporate buddies rip you off even more, or new Democrats are going to save you money on your rent and your groceries. That's a choice that Canadians will have to make. Can we get an answer? I will look at any vote that comes before us and we will make a decision in the best interest of Canadians as any minority government normally operates. When I'm Prime Minister, I will keep my promises. When I see how all of the political parties are tuning up their election machines, I mean, just yesterday I saw pictures of Pierre Polyev campaigning in Yellowknife of all places. Don't tell me there's nothing on the horizon. There is something brewing. And right now, it looks as though we have to be prepared. So if you truly care about what might happen, if Trudeau were to actually finagle a way to stay in power, I mean, we have to step up. And stepping up begins with making sure that you are as 
active as possible, whether that includes being on social media or creating videos like these of your own or going to the party that you ascribe to, which I presume to be right leaning if you're watching this video and offering to do what you can to help with their campaigns. But you can't sit by the sidelines. This is going to be a pivotal election. It really has the highest stakes that we faced in a long time. It's not just a conservative byline to say we cannot afford Trudeau any longer. We literally cannot afford this guy at all anymore. He broke the bank and I am not curious enough to find out just how much worse he can make things. I, I don't need that and you don't need that. So with that said, this is essentially a call to action. You need to be prepared to do whatever you can. We need to bring an end to this government once and for all. This is actually a partisan video and I am encouraging you to do what you can. Find the spare time, but we need to take action. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. The liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit threeoceans.ca. Once again, that's threeoceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.